Harvard Medical School. And, um, you know, if I was a real crass commercial son of a bitch, I would tell you that you had to pay another $24 to hear that story. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, the publisher will tell you that when that book comes out in a few years, and you'll have to pay it anyway. So I will just, uh, I will just tell you about it anyhow now. Um, so after Look Me in the Eye came out, this fellow, Alvaro Pascal Leon, uh, contacted me. He turns out to be just a brilliant neuroscientist. He had the idea that people with autism, who are always said to not possess the wiring in our brains, to like see into other people. Of course, all of you, you know, you know that. We can't really read other people and you smile at us and we don't smile back. We just kind of don't get that thing. And so the conventional wisdom was that we were missing the wiring in our brains to do that. Alvaro had a different idea. Alvaro thought that maybe everyone had that wiring, but in people with autism, there was a regulatory mechanism that was turning that off, so it didn't work in us. And that seemed like a strange idea, you'd think at first glance, why would you want a regulatory system? And the answer to that is, if you're like a nursing mother with a little baby, you've got to have this extraordinary connection to the unspoken signals of your baby to pick your baby up and understand what we you know what he needs and what he wants and, 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 and every one of you who's been a mother or watched a mother you've seen that play out but then that same mother can go out in the street and encounter you know two people horsing around or people can be you know telling her stories at work or whatever and she's just totally unmoved by that so that that mother can go from this extraordinary emotional insight into the baby to turning it way down to dealing with people on the street and then up to some middling level for someone she likes at work. It goes up and down over a huge range unconsciously and instantly. And that's the regulatory system Alvaro theorized was running wild in autism. So he then, he has a tool that they use out there. He has spent probably 25 years, most of his medical career, researching what they call TMS, which is the use of high-powered focused magnetic fields that will deliver magnetic energy into an area about the size of a marble in your brain. And by firing magnetic energy into your brain, they are able to induce tiny electrical currents by the principle of electromagnetic induction. Those currents can charge or discharge areas of your brain, and they can essentially turn them up or turn them down. I participated in about 20 stimulations over a period of a few years. 17 of those stimulations didn't do anything. Three of them were life-changing. Three of those stimulations turned on abilities to see into other people. And, and it was just the most magical experience. The first time that happened to me was April 28, 2008. And I left the TMS lab and I thought nothing had happened and that night. I had hallucinations all night, like I'd been doing mushrooms, and, and I got up the next day, and I, I went to work, and I could just, I could see into the people, I, I could look at them, and I could, I could see that they were happy or scared or anxious, I, I could see it, and, and you know what that's like? It's like, if you're a colorblind person, and all your life people have been telling you about red and blue and green, and you get to the point where it just makes you angry because the evidence of your eyes is black and white and everyone tells you all this red, blue, green stuff. You don't even believe it. And that moment I knew it was real. I saw it. And not only did I know it was real, I knew that the mechanism is within my own mind to make it work. Because he didn't turn that ability on in me after years and years of therapy and hard work. He turned it on like snapping a switch by sitting in a chair and having energy fired into the right side of my head for half an hour and going home and sleeping it off. And it just came alive the next day. And, and the ability that they turned on faded away after about a week as the energy from that stimulation faded. And you know, those of you who read the old uh, science fiction book, Flowers for Algernon, about the scientists that take the janitor and make him into a genius, well, that's how I felt. It started slipping away and I thought, boy, what's gonna happen now? Am I gonna lose like even more than I had before? And, and I was kind of scared. But you know, when it 
faded away, it's just like that colorblind thing. See, the day before you saw color, all it was to you, I don't mean just swear about the little kids, but frankly, it was all bullshit until then. And, and suddenly, it was real and vivid and alive. And I know it's real and alive. And I now know absolutely positively, because I have felt it and seen it, that there are these people who can look into each other's eyes, and it is a window into the soul, and they can see these things. And you know, my mind has been building that ability slowly and steadily ever since. And if you look at me, and you consider the way that I can look at you now and engage you now, I still don't have the level of insight that the TMS induced in me artificially, but if you look at the transformation in me, it's magical. And, and more than that, if you just look at, in general, how I'm transformed in the last three years, if you go to YouTube and you type John Elder Robeson into YouTube, the first thing that comes up is this video that my brother made of me on my farm tractor almost four years ago, before Look Me in the Eye was published. And you would think I'd be very comfortable talking to my own brother. So I should be like natural and at ease in that video. So you look at me in that video and listen to how I talk, listen to my voice, and then you contrast that with how you see me here tonight. And I swear that you're going to look at that video and you're going to think it's like a talking robot compared to now. And so for every one of you who thinks, well, my son's 21 and he's still having a hard time with this Asperger thing, is he really going to be able to change? And, and you're just like so different, you know, and, and could, could I get like that? Or could my son get like that? Or could my boyfriend or husband get like that? You look at that video of how much I have changed in four years and boy, it is like magic. It really is. And that is real and absolutely unmistakable. Now, I think the TMS is still scientific research, but I would wager sometime five to ten years from now, that work that he is doing out there is going to lead to therapy that we can use to remediate the disability of not being able to read other people. And I, 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 I can't begin to even say how many lives that could change. If that, you know, if that indeed becomes a mainstream thing. Ten years ago, he started working on the use of TMS to turn down the areas of the brain that were overactive in depression. Last September, they received FDA approval for the use of TMS to treat drug-resistant depression. And I suspect that TMS to treat this sort of thing, you know, I, I think it's more than five years away, but it's less than ten. And I think it's coming. I wish I could tell you you could go sign up for it. What I would say to you is, since TMS is on the market now for depression, there is the very real risk that people will say they'll seize an opportunity and they'll start offering TMS to treat autism. TMS is a powerful, powerful tool and I think it has power to do bad as well as do good. If somebody was telling you they wanted to do TMS, and they were a neuroscientist at Harvard Medical School, I'd believe them. If it was Bob's TMS clinic offering $60 <laughs> treatments, I'd urge you to be very, very cautious. And um, so I, I would say uh, that's something I, I have, I just, I have a lot, a lot of hope for that. And, and that work is one of the reasons I have remained so passionately committed to autism science. In the introduction, she told you that I serve on all these science boards. And, and the reason I do that is that I am committed to pushing for science that is going to lead to therapies that will benefit autistic people living today. I understand the importance of genetic work to find pathways into autism and find things that may go wrong to seriously disable us. But I also know how much people like me and many of you, we want to have better lives and we want tools to help us do that. This book of mine is a natural tool. TMS has a power that transcends this. And, and you know, and I want to see stuff like that developed. And, and that's why I'm involved in science. Yes? Well, you, you talk about um, that you adjust your behavior. Um, I've heard it described that um, it's a real effort and that after a certain amount of time, the, the behavior um, 
get too tired to adjust that behavior and then they can calm and then it, it makes it more difficult in your personal life because that's where they get a chance to relax. Does that, do, do you experience that? Yes. She said, well, if I adjust my behavior, doesn't it make me more tired than behaving without adjustments? I, I actually say that very thing in this book. You see, now that I know through this TMS research that there are people who look at other people and they read them instinctively and correctly, it doesn't take those people any effort to do it. It doesn't make them tired to do it. But, but now, what I know is that if you and I are at a party and you are not touched by autism and I am, you can look around the room and you can see who'd like to talk to me, who wouldn't like to talk to me, where should I go and what should I do, and you can make good decisions like that. I don't have the instinct, but what I have is a good logical brain, and so do most other people with autism. So with that logical brain, I am able to to reason through what's happening. If I can't look at your face and read in your eyes how you feel, I can come up to you and I can say, hi, I'm John Robeson, I can start talking to you, and I can watch you, and over the space of a minute or so, I don't necessarily have to reveal anything intimate of myself or whatever, I just talk to you, and I can compare your responses to my memory bank of how thousands of other people have responded in my life, and I can make a reasonably good judgment about whether you are or are not friendly towards me and what I should do next. So what that's done is it's taken me from being that kid who didn't know how to ask a girl to dance to being a person who can have successful conversations with most people most of the time. That's the power of an adaptive strategy. And, and when I do that, it does take more energy than a person who can do it instinctively so sure, I get tired, and if I go to a party, I might be tired out at 9 o'clock, and you could go until 2 in the morning, but what's the alternative, to not go to the party at all? I mean, that's just really life-changing. So yes, it is tiring, but the more you do it, the more comfortable you become. And I think if you start down that road when you're 20 and not like I did when I'm 40, you know, I, I think it's, it's a good life-changing thing, even if it does take more energy. Yes? Oh. Um, my friend and I have these discussions, and um, she's talked about, um, you know, we train our kids so early, and my son was diagnosed, sorry, before he was three, and she said, you know, we're kind of training our kids so early, and we're actually training out, like, the savantness, like, with your electronics. I mean, as an adult, how would you, how would you judge that? We want our kids to have fulfilling, successful lives, but are we actually taking away some of their special skills by filling them with all these social stuff that it's really hard for them to acquire, and then... That's all, you know, do you see what I'm saying? It, it seems like we're There's training so them so time. early that they're losing some of their yeah. special autistic qualities.